And we are live on this rainy day in London. But hello, everybody at the Elephant and Castle community. I'm Nick from Retribe. Joining me today to brighten up the day is Shivali. Um, Shivali, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'm doing great. I mean, it's, you know, typical London weather, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to double check on how to pronounce your last name, but it's Bikta. It's yeah? Bikta. Bekta? Okay, Shivali Bekta. I uh, should have double checked with you before. Um, <laughs> mispronouncing names is something that I do quite a bit. I don't mean to do it, but it's just I get my tongue gets a little bit tied sometimes. But um, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, the, the, for, for the community who don't know a lot about you, except for the little bio, could you explain to people, um, you know, who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I work full time in a corporate job as a management consultant. But outside of that, I am a life coach um, with a focus on resilience and absolutely fascinated by everything resilience. Um, and I define resilience as our ability to get back up when life knocks us down, uh, our ability to move through failures, through setback, through challenging times. So that's become my obsession <laughs> almost um so yeah that's that's what i do uh, i was born and raised in india and i lived there for you know most of my life in early 20s and then moved to us and lived there for a few years uh, and i've been in london for the last three years do you do you pref where do you prefer in terms of locations that's, that's oh, i do a lot, i've done a lot of traveling too but yeah i mean it's it's hard to pick one so if i had to pick based on food i would say india uh, if I had to pick based off of, you know, the work that I do, etc., I would say US actually. Mm. And in terms of traveling and exploring, I, I guess UK. So they're all they all have their pluses and minuses. Yeah, they do. I think that we're pretty blessed that we can live in a world today where we can, you know, I'm so lucky. I've lived in a few different countries. Yeah. Um, but London always seems to pull me pull me attract me back i think there's something mm. about the communities especially the southwark community that we work in ah. and the west end community there's something that's just so vibrant and i i love the diversity i love the people that um you know that 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 live in these communities it just feels i think london's a magical place for that so anyway that's just a little bit of a sidetrack um so i want to i like your definition of resiliency and as soon as you, anyone talks about resiliency and they say you know our ability to get hit and bounce back back bounce back up i just think about rocky you know, mm -hmm. um, that scene in Balboa where he says life's going to hit you hard and it doesn't how matter how hard many can you get, get hit. hit. Yeah, it's, yeah. 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 And, and how hard you can get hit and keep going. And yeah. I, I, I love it. I, I do a lot of my own work based around the fact that we do get hit. I, the warrior mentality is something that we've all been brought up to, but I'm, I'm wondering and challenging the idea of you know, the, the, like how we get hit and what we get yeah. hit with, you know, it's because it, challenges are going to happen. And I think that over the, over the, the, our human evolution, they've been very physical challenges, you know, uh, they've been brutal at times. And I think that today mm -hmm. we live in a world that still has a lot of violence in it, but the, the trauma that can be caused from other types of, of getting hit, getting hit in terms yeah. of metaphorical getting hit, right? Someone mm -hmm. breaking up with you can be just as much as getting a big punch yeah. square on the nose. Absolutely. You know, so um, how how did what what piqued your interest in, you know, working in management consulting to to um, seeing how resilience or well, probably, I guess, traumas and things that have happened to people? Um, what's what kind of sparked the interest in, in, yeah. in helping people through resiliency? Yeah, it's, it's mostly driven by, you know, my own personal journey. And to be fair, nothing overly dramatic has happened in my life. You know, a few challenges and few setbacks that I've had to work through. But what I realized was that, you know, you've got a steady stream of good things that happen to you, but you've also got a steady stream of, of challenging things and, and setbacks and failure. And I was not equipped to deal with the challenging side of life not at all uh, and I've spent too much time down in the dumps thinking about oh why, why did this happen to me and I feel so sad and I feel pretty powerless etc so resilience because I've had to work on it for the last 10 years uh, it, it's just become a theme in my life um, and I you know as much as I like what Rocky said I think I've sort of it's almost a spectrum 
of resilience where I initially started off thinking as I'm going to be so tough, I'm going to be so strong and nothing can break me to now realizing that actually things, when things happen, it does hurt, it does break us. And you can't just sort of ignore that side of it, but you also, you have to know that while you're strong, you're also soft and vulnerable. So, you know, you can get hurt, but you can also get up and, and you know, move in a better direction from there. So it's sort of always having that balance of the, you know, the hard and the soft side of life. What happened to you that you weren't equipped to, uh, what challenges happened that you didn't have any, any tools to deal with? Yeah, I think I, I like to summarize it as a huge mismatch between my expectations and my reality, uh, which was hard for me to, to figure out. So early on with my first job, um, huge gap in what I thought it would be, how I would feel there versus what it really was. Um, and I wasn't particularly happy with it. Um, you know, and a lot of little things here and there led me to a place where I was very unhappy. And I talk about it in, in my podcast, Inbox Yourself, where, you know, I woke up one morning and I couldn't get out of bed. Like physically, my legs wouldn't move. And it was, it was hard to process that because, you know, I was just living my life, going through my day. And all of a sudden, my body sort of stopped working. Um, and it happened multiple times and it took me a while to realize that I had in my head created, you know, a very negative environment. Uh, I wasn't happy with my job. I wasn't happy with where I was living, how my life was. And at some level, I think I felt trapped in that rather than, you know, challenge, uh, channel, channeling the, the stronger, more empowered side that you know all of us have and and to say that you know if I don't like it I'm going to do something about it I'll I'll change something I think I spiraled in that um, situation so much that my body started, get, started getting impacted um, and and that to me was a wake-up call and that started the whole journey uh, into resilience and trying to figure out you know how do I like I said initially thinking more about how do I become more strong I don't want things to knock me off course to then realizing that, you know, if you do get knocked off course, how, how do I get back up? And it's just been a series of, you know, little things here and there, which um, now when I look back, I feel like, you know, why did I spend so much time worrying about not getting the right job, not going to the school that I wanted to, and always picturing life as running on a treadmill, putting in all the effort, but not getting anywhere. You know, that's not that's not a healthy place to be in. Wondering when you when you say when you came out of this time where you wanted to to get stronger, mm. was there something that you needed to before you got stronger and started building your resiliency and having the tools? Was there something that needed to heal? Was yeah. there something that needed to happen before that? Oh, absolutely. But you know what? I didn't realize it. Um, like I think I realized it three or four years later that something had to heal because I um, felt really bad and then obviously my body got impacted so I uh, saw doctors etc to fix that and realized obviously I'm not in a great state of mind and my response to that was oh I'm going to be so strong I'm going to be so tough I will power my way through this and I did that and and you know that lasted it takes a lot of willpower it takes a lot of energy to you know get out of it when you don't acknowledge the wound when you don't acknowledge you know, what it is truly that's hurting you and you, you know, put band-aids on top of, um, you know, whatever you see. So I realized, I think three years down the lane that a lot had to heal and I still find things um, that I know I have to address and heal. And I think one of them was to just be okay with being inadequate, which I still, I still struggle with that, <laughs> but that is part of the work that I do. And I don't, when I say inadequate, I don't mean, you know, it in a negative or a bad way. I think we're all, we all have our shortcomings. And mm -hmm. I, as an individual, want to be okay with mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, hi, buddy. <laughs> I, I'm doing a Facebook Live here, dude. Can oh. I get it for you in 30 minutes? No. Can I? I'm, I'm, I'm working, bud. I want it. Okay. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask okay. a question Take too, and I'm gonna type. Um, 
where you grew up, the environment that you grew up in, I'm wondering about whether or not there was a lot of pressure on you from, from you know, with because of this fear of inadequacy, if there yeah. was a lot of pressure put on from parents or from other people of, Shivali, you've got to do this and you've got to do that to be successful. Yeah, I think the pressure has always been probably my own creation. <laughs> really? Um, and I mean, of course, there, you know, you, you grow up in an environment where there are expectations. I think that's true for all of us. And I used to joke with my sister that I have an older sister. So I used to joke with her that if you were not as smart, not as good looking, not as amazing at what you did, I think I would have had an easier life. Because, mm. you know, when you have an older sibling who's good at everything, then, you know, you are... You shouldn't feel like that, but you do feel less in a lot of different ways. It's not because she wanted me to feel that way or somebody else wanted me to feel that way. But, you know, it's just a matter of the environment that you're in. And I think I grew up with some unhealthy thought patterns, to be honest. Um, you know, the, the need to compare, which I do notice in a lot of people, uh, instead of saying, you know what, I'm walking down a unique path, which is my own, which is different but mm -hmm. still very much my own so and there is no comparison between two people like we don't even have the same fingerprint so how can i compare you know to two people yes buddy you have to find it for me what were the expectations you were putting on yourself and at what age were you starting to plan your life and your the strategies for your profession and having a family and all that all that all the yeah. stuff that society says that we need to have yeah, I think, I mean, from a very early age, I mean, I can think of five-year-old me who had a plan for <laughs> a plan mm. for the future and, and, and what I wanted. Um, yeah, and I always look at it, or at least not always, but now I look at it as, you know, identities and, and masks that we create for ourselves just yeah. to feel, either to feel whole, complete, and adequate or to just feel like you know we belong somewhere yeah uh, and i think we all have that um, that's a very young age though to put those expectations okay buddy you find it for me and i'll get it those are very young expectations. looking for something interesting <laughs> yeah he's like are you gonna go back to your room no. you promised you were going to that's okay. like you're gonna get a cheeseburger and a milkshake right <laughs> mm. he's bored um no, okay. <laughs> but I, it's funny because you know he's five and um, there's no real thoughts of, you know, having to accomplish certain, that's a very young age of, that you put that pressure on you. Yeah. Um, and that was because you think, because you had the older sibling that you were trying to. I think older sibling, I also remember watching, you know, as a kid TV shows, et cetera, which showed women in very powerful roles and, obviously you know that's not the only thing but i'm talking about there's so much that we get from our external environment that conditions us um especially at a young age um mm. even if it is you know watching cartoons etc i was always drawn to um cartoons and tv series that had like a strong character and then oh, imagining and you, myself and you, as the character yeah i i think that's yeah. part Buddy. <laughs> two, sec two seconds yeah, no I'm, I'm just doing a, a talk right now buddy can i find this game for you in a bit no. well what, what are you gonna find what do i need to find that's okay let's I, find what is what is he looking for what game are you for? i can't find it buddy can you go ask your brother to find it yeah well here i don't if you can find it i'll get it okay because i can't find it buddy <laughs> yeah you know working from home i love it yeah. just because i don't have anyone around i know it can be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge at times but you know this is this is the first time that this has happened and it's just something that a month ago i was like i was i did one in uh in another place and and they were with me yeah and uh little zach wanted to wanted something and i kept my arm out mm. so that he couldn't get to me and i was oh. thinking about it after yeah and i was thinking about what message is that sent i'm not a dad like they're they're yeah, they're yeah. not my children by birth and i'm learning all of this stuff and i'm trying to even with regards to what you're talking about is like what are these 
what are the messages that we're getting from parents? What are the, no, you know, mm. or, and this is what I, I was, I said to myself today, if anything happened, I was going to engage with it. Yeah. Um, because you were, were, and, and again, I'm only kind of learning this stuff, but I'm thinking about the things that were put on me when I was a kid, all the pressures of trying to play sports to, at a very, very high level to get the father's approval or to stay out of the house or to get some kind of career in sport. Mm. When in my heart, I didn't know if it was what I really wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally get that. You know, I the idea that I'm sort of trying to explore a bit more in my head, which I think you'll connect with, is that I guess at the end of the day, we're all looking for, you know, a connection, someone to see me, someone to hear me, even if I'm like a 90 year old or a five year old kid. And when that doesn't happen, it just it's so jarring. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, it's perfectly okay for five-year-old Zach to hop around. <laughs> yeah, you know, because they're just trying to figure things out. And, I, and again, yeah. it's just this thing of, like, the, the pressures that we're putting on ourselves, on mm. everyone to perform, to look a certain way, to do a certain thing. You yeah. know, social media, what, they, what these young folks are going through nowadays are these pressures that we're putting on, themselves, on them. And then, you know my story, because we, we yeah. talked the other day. And... I mean, I'm 50, I'll be 51 in a couple of weeks. And there's no way that an 18 year old saying to 18 year old Nick, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to be, you know, interviewing people on a, on a Facebook live to help people build community, to help people yeah. realize that maybe when they were young, something happened to them or some pressures were, were put on them that created some kind of trauma and trauma doesn't need to be physical. You know, it's mental. It's like having aspirations mm -hmm. and then feelings of failure and, yeah. You know, these things affect our bodies and how we move forward. And I'm interested to know how you dealt with it. Yeah. So this is the thing is how, what were your coping mechanisms with not being able to set expectations of such a young age that ended up where you not being able to wake up, you know, your body shutting down on you. Mm. Yeah. So it involved lots of crying, mm. <laughs> which I, I don't say that as a joke, but honestly, as a way to say that, you know, let your emotions out don't keep them in because that um it just you know takes the pressure off so yes i i, I cried a lot, a lot i wrote a lot of things down you know everything that was in my head just as a way to get things out of my head um but what really started to sort of turn the ship for me was um two things one was running so I started running on a very regular basis. Almost every day I would go out for, even if it was like a five minute run, mm -hmm. um, run walk sort of a thing, I would do that very actively. Um, and in a place that I liked, there was a park close by, beautiful green um, area. So that really helped me sort of get out of my head. Um, and I don't know if if running, I haven't researched it enough, if running or walking does something to us, but it did help me get out of my head and almost opened up uh, the creative side of my, my thinking. The other thing that really helped was reading. I never used to read before that, or I read like fiction or some, you know, drama novel. Uh, and I started reading nonfiction and biographies, et cetera, um, which, which helped quite a lot because I could, read someone else's story of trials and mm. how you know they turned it around and that sort of shifted in me that oh things you know it's not going to stay like this forever if i do something about it things can change i can change you know nothing's static so those are the two daily practices that that really helped me yeah get out of it uh, like the, the physical exercise, yes, that increases endorphins, that does all the things that we need our body to do, help process yeah. the, the, put, the food that we put in it. But also, like, it's really interesting that you talked about the park. And mm -hmm. I think that we live in, a, you know, these kind of, and London is lucky, we have a lot of green space. Yeah. But we're becoming more and more disconnected from the earth, you know, mm -hmm. that we sit there, we go for a walk in a park, don't need to hug a tree, you just lean on a tree. Yeah. And all of a sudden, something clears, and we just feel a little bit better, mm. you know. Yeah. And I, and, and I, I think this is kind of going on the idea that that connection, community, are so important in 
our healing and our transforming and our in our in going back to five year olds mm. and being able to hold their hand and say, you know, I'm I'm sorry, little five year old Shivali, that you put so much pressure on yourself. It's okay, yeah. and I'm good now. You know, to be able to express those kind of languages in this in community, in nature, mm. and in and, and ceremony, and coming back to, you know, and it's a side of things that I think a lot of people are scared to talk about, and because they think that it's in terms of resiliency, we have ideas. We think, you know, and I think Rocky is a, is a very good example of resiliency, but he also is a very vulnerable character. Mm. He cries. Yeah. But yet society says we're weak if we cry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that you, you mentioned that you cried a lot. <laughs> yes. What yeah. was that like? What was it? What was it about? What were you feeling at the time? How yeah. and what were you feeling when you came out of it? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, for our um, for the side of our brain that does creative thinking, it's slower in how it works. And there are, you know, a few books out there that talk about it. Um, and there's Chimp Paradox is one of my absolute favorite books because you know the writer simplifies how the brain works and he essentially says you know the side of your brain that he calls chim needs to mm -hmm. be exercised you have to almost let those emotions out in the right way obviously it's not like you know go pick a fight with someone mm -hmm. uh, but the way I managed that was either by crying either by writing things going for a walk and this is going to sound so stupid but I would sometimes talk to myself and tell myself that, you know, I was upset, I was unhappy and all of that. And I think once I got past that, that's when um, I could think more creatively. I could tell myself that, you know what, if you take a different action, you can create a different outcome because the life that's in front of you is the result of your actions. So if you change your actions, that should change, you know, the outcome that's in front of you. What was the language like when you talk to yourself? What's it, is it, is it? instructive is it compassionate is it is it strict um yeah know, how, I think, how, how... yeah Nick I think it's evolved to be very honest it's evolved over the last 10 11 years um and honestly it started off with not nice words not at all it's almost like an angry parent yelling at a child that you're a disappointment you know you should have done better etc and that doesn't help because that just sort of drags you down um, and I, through that, realized that, you know, I need to use better words, that words do have a huge impact. And again, like reading and listening to webinars, et cetera, helped quite a lot because I didn't understand how the mind works. I didn't understand, you know, that, you know, you're, you're communicating with yourself, essentially. So choose better words. And I still struggle with being uh, sensitive towards myself. I'm still very hard on myself, but I can, when I hear those words or that tone from myself, I've gone to a place where I can say, okay, you know what, let's pause this for now. Uh, but yes, choice of words, I think definitely more important. It's thank God get, gotten better for me yeah. <laughs> with practice. I'm wondering too, Shivali, is that right at the beginning of this, I asked you about what happened when you were younger and, and, and you know, the, the, what needed to be healed. And you you were a little bit almost kind of dismissive. You were a bit like nothing, nothing big happened to me. Yeah. And I would like to ask more about that because yeah. is that your language to you being like, oh, you know, I, nothing really big happened, but yet, so you're going to kind of dismiss maybe, yeah. you know, that nothing, because this is what, I mean, I'm, I'm in a community where, you know, like I know I've been to some, some places but that was my pain where the consequences of, of the traumas and the wounds that happened to me are not a reflection of my worth or as, as someone who's, who coaches or who, who does something. I, it, I, what I found is our, our war stories are consequences of whatever happened. Doesn't, it doesn't rate us on a scale of you are more worthy to tell hmm. your story because you went to jail yeah. or, you know, you almost died or, you know, you got beaten up really bad. So, yeah. so because that didn't happen to me, uh, my trauma is not as deep. Yeah. And yeah. what I've learned is that is just not true. That's nonsense. 
our pain is our pain, our trauma is our trauma. It doesn't matter where we are in that because there is no scale. Yeah. So is that was that you kind of being dismissive of like, oh, nothing big happened to me? Uh, no, 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 not at all. And I think I should have clarified that it's not to say that, you know, your pain is bigger than mine, so I should not talk about it. Um, but I think of it from the point of view of, and this is honestly what helped me get perspective and still does when I'm in a difficult situation that, mm. you know, there are people out there who've had worse situations and they found a way through it. So if I'm in a challenging situation and I tell myself, oh my God, I don't think this is gonna end or I tell myself that, you know, somebody out there has been through worse, which means you can get through this. It's not to say that, you know, not comparing myself or comparing the other person. Mm. And I think we all have our own share of pain and trauma. I think that's true for everyone. And yeah, it's just acknowledging your own pain as your own. It's, it doesn't have to be more or less than anyone else's. Yeah, exactly. I really, I really like what you said there. That's true. It's so, you know, we, we are always in a position of, uh, of comparing ourselves, you yeah. know, and, and we live in a world of comparison and judgment. And, um, and if you want to beat yourself up about it all the time, it's a really bad, it's a horrible place to be in because I, you know, mm -hmm. I could sit there on Instagram for even 10 minutes and I'm beating myself up saying, Nick, you failed. <laughs> you could have been this, you know, yeah. you should have done that and all yeah. because you would have had this and so and so's just got a new car or a new house and you know uh, why you know all these things of of beating ourselves up about things that I think are all changing anyway. I don't think mm -hmm. that the measure of me is the the amount of money my watch cost is which is what I used to think. And again, we live in this world of division, comparison and judgment. So how do you, yeah. how do you help your clients? How do you, what's the method methods that you use to try to help people in this world of comparison and judgment, you know, to actually uncover truths that, you know, we're all beautiful people. We all have yeah. purpose. We all have passion. Yeah. I think, well, that's, I feel like a bit of a loaded question, but I'll, I'll try to do my best. Um, Is it loaded? <laughs> Yeah, know. because you know, know, comparison just... seems yeah. like something. I mean, we all compare, and there's yeah. something underneath that. And sometimes it is self worth, sometimes it's not knowing what you truly want, mm. but sometimes it's also an indication of what you do want, right? I'm comparing myself to uh, a pro athlete who runs, you know, really fast, and I think, oh my God, I'm not that good a runner. Well, because secretly I desire that. I want to be like that professional athlete who runs like that. Um, and how I frame it to me, unfortunately, that's a bit, um, you lose your power in that framing of, oh my God, he's better than me or she's better than me, rather than saying, you know what, actually that inspires me. I want to do that. So let's figure it out. So comparison can be both good and bad. I think what I always like to do is to sit with it, take a look at it. And then also take a look at what is it that you want in your life, not what your friends want you to have, not what your parents want, what do you want? If you were in a bubble all by yourself, what are the things that you would want that would make you feel happy, that would make you feel good? And from that place, move forward. So if, if I'm single and I look at someone who's in a happy relationship and then feel like, you know, that my life is terrible, I don't have this, I really want, but like, you know, having a relationship was never on my agenda, for example. Or could you, you know, so it's it's having a, a very fair logical comparison between what is it that I truly want? And then if let's say a relationship is not on, on your agenda of things that want, that you want, that'll make you happy, and you look at someone who has a relationship, you can say, oh, great, I'm happy for you. And not feel the pressure or you know the strain that comes with, oh my gosh, I don't have this. And the second thing is to not think of comparison as something bad. I mean, I always ask my clients who are in that situation and even myself, because I go through it, that what is it that this feeling is trying to tell me? 
you know, what is it? If comparison was a person, was a friend, and I was sitting down with this person, what is it that she's trying to tell me? Like in my case, wanting to run like a pro athlete, I think she's trying to tell me that, you know, there's something here, let's take a look at it. I love that. Um, it's like, you know, some shadow work, some trying to find the truth. You know, when these fears, these anxieties, they're coming up, they're, they're, you feel them in your body for a reason. Just as your body shut down on you, your bodies are trying to tell us something. They're yeah. so intuitive and, you know, all full of feelings and nerves. And we yeah. don't want to listen to it. And I get the, those, like a lot of fears come up and I sit there and I'll go, what is it trying to teach me? And I don't mm. mind, I don't mind trying to, I don't mind saying this here. Most of it is, Nick, you're not doing enough. Mm. And I look back and I go, am I, you know, and then I sit there and, and if that fear comes up, I guarantee you, I, I, I didn't put in a full day of effort. Yeah. I may have just snuck off and instead of um, doing a few more LinkedIn researches or something, I, mm. I went to a, I went to the donut shop, you know, <laughs> and I got, and I'm not saying that's bad. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. But when there are deadlines, when there are things to do, when there are things that I want to accomplish, yeah, my body tells me when I'm slacking, mm. you know, and, and I think it's good to have a nap every once in a while. It's good to give your body. It's good to treat yourself. But sometimes I can, I can drop the anchor a little bit and I don't, mm. you know, I'm admitting it, but my body will tell me through uh, Nick, you, you know, this, something's not right. You're scared. Yeah. You know, a, a bank statement will come through or a credit card bill or, and I'll be like, ah, mm -hmm. yeah. so, so scared. But then it really is just telling me that why don't you try to do a really good, like do a really good today to do list tomorrow and knock all of them off and have a really good feeling day. Because that's the beauty of our, our, our world is we always have a day to reset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I would, I would just add to that, you know, there would, there are probably just from my limited experience, there's a case of sporadic comparison and then there is chronic comparison. Sporadic, mm. you know, once a month or once a week, something happens and you end up comparing. Um, but the other one is where, you know, you're constantly in that state of comparing, constantly comparing your life to someone else's life, comparing your job to some, your body to someone else's. You're just, that's when you need to audit your, the way you think because, mm. You know, for maybe there's a conditioning there that you were raised with that. You were maybe around friends and people or communities who, who think in that way. And so you've learned that the only way to think is through comparison. Mm. So in that case, you know, what you have, what you've got to do is something, I guess, different. It makes me think everybody needs a coach. Uh, yes, I think you everybody know, every, needs a coach. <laughs> I think everybody does, because I think we need someone to hold us accountable to doing this, yeah. this inner work shadow work, truth finding, inventory, you know, yeah. these way, because if I try to look at how I, I want to run the show and how, you know, Nick wakes up and I want to take the reins or the, the wheel of the bus and I want to drive it, invariably it doesn't end up as, as well as if I use the tools that are on my, uh, uh, available to me of, of letting go, of being guided, of mm. writing, of meditation, you know, of yeah. feeling connected, of feeling helpful and useful to other people. Um, and then I live in that balance. Well, it's like you said at the beginning, life is ups and downs and it's this, you know, it's like waves and we need, we need the, the, the right tools or the right boat equipment to, to ride it. Mm. Um, but when I get into fear, ego, oh, I, I want this to feel okay. I know I'm in yeah. trouble and I need somebody to help me keep accountable to these tools because, you know, most, a lot of the people I know are walking through li life every day just thinking I've got to solve all my problems mm. and that isn't necessarily <laughs> true. There are there, you know, when you, yes, you might be a, a, an individual who doesn't have a support system around them, but by letting go of thinking that you can't, you don't need to solve all your problems and to be guided and to have someone help you find these inner truths about dealing with the fears and the inadequacies and the, then we can, it gives us the tools to, like you said, again, I'm repeating, ride the waves of life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, like you said, you don't have to, you don't have to solve everything. You don't have to solve it right, right now, right here. Mm. Um, small steps are still steps. And, yeah. you know, as long as you're making progress, it's all fine. But I, I know what you're saying, like, we take so much 
we put ourselves in pressure situations where, you know, if I wake up and I'm not feeling good, I'm going to do everything to make sure that I feel good. And then, you know, you spend so much time trying to make yourself feel better. Whereas, you know, you, if you could just let it be that, okay, you know, today I don't feel hundred yeah. percent. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go back to bed for 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, treat yourself. You know, I don't feel, yeah. You know, but like you say, just acknowledge it. And, and, um, and I love writing exercises for that because, yeah. you know, where is it that you're not feeling okay? Is it your head, your heart? Mm. you're or somewhere in your organs because i i've now started to feel different kind of pangs of like oh anxious here mm. or oh uh, fear here so oh sweaty palms you know i'm not prepared that kind of stuff and it's start, i'm starting to learn that my body is actually always sending me little signs little signals mm. you know i uh, oh you and i know when i haven't been eating well i get a little <laughs> pang right here right right here <laughs> and it is probably my liver saying nick too much sugar <laughs> um but i listen to it and i'll yeah. drink a ton of water and i'll yeah. i know i'm going off on a bunch of different things but i'll treat I'll, I'll acknowledge the fact that that you know we do have these tools and i think it's really important for people to go hey i don't need to solve out my, all my problems there are resources out there like yourself that people can come to to try to be coached and guided through you know healing trauma work and truth finding yeah yeah absolutely and I think one of the ways to do that, because we, and I know I'm guilty of this, like we rush into things. We don't slow mm. down our own thinking. Mm. You know, I go from, I'm not feeling good to 10 things to feel better today in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, you know, slowing down your own thinking and being very deliberate that, you know, this is what I feel, what's going on. It's okay. Yeah. Just, you know, it's, chill. It, exactly there's nothing like a it's okay breath eh just uh -huh. it's okay <laughs> oh everything's good yeah. um let's 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 talk a little bit about your podcast um yes. can you tell us how that came around and and what your your goals are for that what your intention is for your podcast yes uh world domination that is the plan yeah. with the podcast <laughs> yeah knock joe rogan off the spot <laughs> <laughs> maybe um but so the name of the podcast is unbox yourself um and my aim is again you know everything resilience how do we what are the tools what are the techniques what are the stories out there around resilience that can help us become you know stronger and better and move forward and i think selfishly it's also so I can find um, better and better tools and stories for myself to help me move through uh, challenging times. Um, yeah, and that's that's really the sentiment behind it. And I think a lot of times I look at that podcast as an extension of my personality um, and just a curious mind running around wanting to find answers and wanting to find stories. Um, yeah. I love the, I love the, you know, we are storytellers. We all are also yeah. listeners of stories. And I think that telling our story is, is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, this the whole campfire tribal thing of people telling stories and, you know, we don't have to, our story isn't us. We don't have to own it, you know, yeah. but it is, it is the evolution of our experiences. Mm -hmm. What's, um, you know, so how many podcasts have you done so far? Yeah, so I've got three episodes that are live at the moment and three in the pipeline. Yeah. So we're steadily, yeah, steadily. Well, I, I know one that's in the pipeline, but tell me, talk to me about the, uh, uh -huh. talk, to, talk to me about the other ones. Have you had some, some really cool insights into the three that are live? What have you, have you learned anything? So from the podcasts, I'm, so three that are in the pipeline. One of them is a very cool story of you know a young person who's achieved a lot and you know just little things sprinkled around on his way um and and how he's managed to navigate all of those different obstacles um and created this sort of persona of being his own cheerleader as he likes to call it and i i quite like that because i remember that's what I used to tell myself that, you know, you've got to be your own cheerleader. Nobody's coming. Nobody's going to come help you. And nobody's going to say, you know, it's okay. Tomorrow will be better. You have to do that for yourself. Mm -hmm. So I quite like that story. 
which hopefully in two, three weeks, that should be live. Uh, the other one that I really like is um, with a lady who is a clinical psychologist, and she's talking about the brain, how it works, how do you connect to, when you are in a stressful situation, you know, your the primal side of your brain kicks in. So how do we turn that off and go to the side of your brain, brain that's more slow thinking that'll actually help you uh, move through, you know, trauma, a challenging time, etc. So I think that'll be pretty cool. I love that because it kind of it's the it's so much part of resiliency is that compassion side of things, yeah. slowing things down, taking your time, you mm -hmm. know, being a little bit and and creative doesn't necessarily mean getting out some paint and or drawing. Or <laughs> yes, um, it's it's sitting in thought, you know, and just contemplating yeah. and. Um, and slowing the breath and and um, and I think that's where I receive I receive when I you know just intuitive thoughts or ideas when I can just slow things down mm. you know and when we're in that kind of manic state of I have to fix then nothing ever comes because it's just a big mess of thoughts and and fears and 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 like you said like not nice language to myself mm. Yeah. yeah. So the podcast is going to be a combination of a few interviews where I'm collecting stories, a few with, um, you know, folks who know either how, how the mind works, how the quantum states and quantum physics applies mm. to our, yeah. our life. And also just some things, some ideas that I have that I've collected over the years, just packaging them in bite sized format. I'm excited. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've just started the year and, you know, now that people are back to work and, you know, I think the last of the restrictions of this mess of the last couple of years are, are, are coming up and we're going to be, the whole world is going to be in a state of healing um, and still dealing with a lot of fears and anxious, anxious and uncertainty. Um, so what's 2022, the rest of the year look like for you with the, the podcast and with the coaching and, do you ever want to just get out of the management role, the, the consulting role and just jump into, you know, the podcast and the, well, that, yeah. Yeah, just tell me what, 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 what's 2022 look like? Mm -hmm. So I would, I wouldn't mind doing that. Um, but, you know, I, I also think of my corporate job as a place that has and continues to challenge me in ways that I do not want to be challenged <laughs> at all I constantly get thrown out of my comfort zone and that's helped with my development in a lot in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. uh, but 2022 is going to be focused on growing this podcast and getting the message out there um, in ways that people can connect with that's my singular agenda for this year other than you know just having fun and continuing to work on myself at the same time beautiful well, how can people get in touch with you, Shivali, if they, 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 they need to reach out to you? Absolutely. So you can find the podcast on Apple Podcast and Spotify to search for Unbox Yourself. Um, so you can find it there and you can connect with me on Instagram. I'm at shivali.bakta. Beautiful. Why don't you uh, also just send me those, the, those things and I'll put them in the Facebook Live feed. Yeah. And you can you can check out the live feed now. As soon as we 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 end this, you can go over and have a watch if you have time. You can rewatch yes, yourself. I think... uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I'm really glad that you're in our lives. And I, I know I think you and Mel have probably got a coffee planned to meet up soon. Yeah. So um yeah, I'm really excited that uh that you're part of our our community now and that we've met you. So um oh, thank, thank you, you for so much. inviting me, Nick. This is yeah, this is phenomenal. Beautiful. And thanks everybody for joining us at the Elephant and Castle community. Don't forget you can join me on Thursday at 11 a.m. for another Tough Through Tender gathering. Thanks a lot and we'll see you all later. Bye for now. Bye.